I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of this property and why I'm here this summer. My grandfather, Emil Shad, uh, bought several pieces of land between 1923 and 1947 that amounted to about 159 acres. And he had a um, typical small farm, dairy cattle, of course, pressed cider, chickens, pigs, grew some crops. And that's where my mother grew up, here on this property. And then I grew up in Syracuse when all the kids were out of the house and that home was getting too large for my parents. They had the home that I'm in now uh, delivered. It's a manufactured home. And that was 19 years ago. And they would split their time between here and uh, Snowbird to Florida. The property was in a trust for myself and my siblings, but a few years ago, my mother talked to my siblings and decided to turn it over to me because I had the most interest or I wasn't smart enough not to take it on. I'm not sure which one is accurate. We'll find out. Two years ago, I decided to semi-retire. I say semi-retire because I still work part-time in order to make some money to be able to fix this place up and pay the taxes. My wife and I have decided to try a five-year plan. This is year two, just to see what we can do with the place. Certainly the infrastructure needs some work and we'll be working on that. And then also trying to find ways to offset some of the taxes. If I can get someone to uh, farm the fields that would help with the taxes because I would get that person's ag agriculture exemption. Uh, there's also forestry management that will allow for tax exemption. So I'm looking into things like that and then also managing the forest. So again, I retired a couple of years ago with a five year plan, hoping to be able to come here each summer and do a little work um, as, as can be. I forgot to mention that over time, some parcels were sold off. So it is now about 97 and a half acres. About a third of it is forest, a third swamp, and uh, a third field, the fields of which are in pretty poor condition. So that's what we have here. It's certainly a labor of love. Um, just trying to take it slow. It's a great place to semi-relax. Um, as you'll see, there's a lot of work to be done but it's also so peaceful and quiet, um, nice way to just sort of settle into life. That's my story. This is an aerial photograph of the property. I'm not sure exactly what year it was taken, probably in the late seventies, uh, give or take. This is the farmhouse in the three bay garage or cider mill over on the other side of the street. The property is split by County Route 84. And then this is the remnants of the cow barn. It was destroyed by um, fire, unknown origin. And some of these side pieces were sold off. So currently there's a home here. And this is the property line. It goes over to about here. It comes into a triangle. And over on this side, the property starts here, goes into the woods, cuts over, and there's another piece, oh, sorry, goes into the woods here, cuts over, and there's another piece in the woods. This is the area that is all swamp now because of beavers damming up uh, Little Bay Creek. So this is the ch uh, chicken barn. It was so dilapidated that my Father uh, had it burnt down on purpose because it was dangerous. And then where we are, uh, the home is here. There's also a camp back along the wood line, which is in poor condition. Uh, we'll see that at some point. So an outline from uh, another map. It's a sort of, oops, I'll put it relative I'll put it relative to the aerial photo that we saw. Get it in some light. So this is where the farmhouse is. And as I mentioned, that piece of property goes to a triangle. 
couple pieces um, to the north were sold and a couple to the south were sold. And then this is the side that we are on now with the house located about here. It goes into the woods. There's a piece I call the triangle piece as well as this one, which I call the house shaped piece. Um, most of this is where the swamp is. So quite a strange property outline, but it was due to buying different pieces over, over time for different reasons. Hello, I'm uh, heading into town to get some wifi. I'm sorry, that's an inside joke. My sister used to say uh, her in-laws went to a hotel once and they were all excited because they got free Wi-Fi. I didn't know what it was, but it was free. Um, also known as Wi-Fi. So, I'm trying to get some Wi-Fi to upload some videos. I went to the library yesterday and didn't work too well. For those that know me, I'm a pretty frugal person. Put another way, I'm about as cheap as they come. So here we would have to pay for trash service. We're not here long enough to make that make much sense. I can go to the transfer station and pay there, but it's a little far away and well, again, you gotta pay. I don't make all that much trash. So I typically uh, just use a, use a small bag and when I'm out in town uh, going somewhere, I figure they have trash containers for their Customers, I'm a customer, so I'll use their trash container. Um, sounds logical, saves me a little bit of money. Last year, I got rid of a whole uh, awning, the, the canvas from an awning by cutting it in strips, rolling it up real tight, zip tying the rolls, and uh, then hitting, hitting the trash cans. So, anyway, there's my life. See you in a bit. We're going to take a tour of the cider mill today. I don't have the electricity turned on over on this side of the road. Um, just no need for it. So we've got a nice sunny day. We'll open up the bays and I'll show you around. We'll start over here. Um, the car my brother is storing here, a 1974 Mercury Cougar. Uh, he gave me the registration and insurance to put in it, so I'll uncover it after we're done with the video. See a little more of the car. Otherwise, this is just an eclectic collection of stuff from my grandfather, my parents, and me. This is a unique item. It's called a red comet. It was a type of fire extinguisher. The pin pops with the heat, and they were made in probably can't see it, but Littleton, Colorado. No idea what the liquid is inside, and probably don't want to know. Back you can see a sign that says Syracuse, or the Q sub Syracuse. It's a cast iron item um, from the train station. My dad worked demolition and construction for most of his life, and that came from one of the train stations. The boat my brother has. Oh, on the car, I think he's got five cars. He's not sure what he wants to do with that one. But I'll pretty much guarantee if you put an offer in the comments section, my sister-in-law will entertain that. He's not a car collector. He's just a collector of cars. So over on this side is the cider press. That's why we call this the cider mill. Um, also the tractor my father bought. We'll see if we can get that started. This year I actually did the winterizing procedures. I've never done that before and it started right up. So it'd be sort of ironic if it doesn't start this year when I do what the book says. Um, again, this is the cider press. Old worm gears. The 
mush mash I'm not sure the proper term I believe went into this monstrosity this was the grinder hooked up to an old car engine to run it apples were weighed over here and otherwise this too just has uh, Old stuff that I need to clean out at some point. A few wonderful uh, apple crates with my grandfather's name on it. A couple of cloth foot tubs. Not sure they're in restorable condition. Uh, this one was actually in the farmhouse and when I was young and we'd come to visit, spend the weekend, I remember taking baths in the old cloth tub. All right, so uh, let's look at the car a little bit, and we'll see if we can get the tractor started. So, here she is. All of her glory. Just needs a little TLC. A little armor all. Beautiful red interior. Uh, of course, a flashlight to make sure it's the right one. Oh! Mercury Cougar. Doesn't really light it, light it up enough to see, but it is in pretty good shape overall. 